All right, let's uh, let's kick off, uh, and I shall see we've got um, three faces on the screen other than mine. Um, and the next session is a panel discussion, and we're going to talk about the challenges of leading and managing multi-location teams. So um, please join in me in welcoming uh, Amani Musibe, uh, Dr. Lewis Taborda, and Nicola Wilson. Um, so thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, I've had the the pleasure of, of working um, with all of you actually at different times over, over the last few years. So I know that you are full of wisdom and insight, insight to, to share with us today. So kick off and I'll ask you, um, you to introduce yourselves if that's okay. Um, I'm keen to understand just what you've been doing really um, during the pandemic and, and how your role and working situation have changed. And I'll start off with you if that's all right, Amani. Thank you, Louise. Thank you for this introduction and for this opportunity to be part of this uh, very wise panel. Uh, just to give you an idea about my workplace to start with, and the line of business, if I want to call it that, in terms of organizational community services include 59 schools, uh, early education centers, out of school hours services, uh, social services, foster care, and so on. So it's a different sort of organization in terms of what it needed to respond to. At the same time, we look after certain property for the community, and we've got shared services in terms of finance, communication, HR, and so on. So as a, an enterprise PMO manager, my role was looking at the overall portfolio and the lines of business in conjunction with the, the response team of COVID-19 and what needs to be done. And we needed to be on top of what the government is issuing in terms of instructions on daily basis and accommodating that in the different lines of business from a business as usual, as well as a project portfolio management as well, where we had to revisit our prioritization model, ensure that projects that can continue under the pandemic circumstances will continue, especially with uh, the sense of urgency and deploying technology to um, substitute face-to-face -face meeting, enabling staff to work from home, as well as looking at what other mechanisms are there in order to continue the business as usual, especially when it came to schools and early education centers. So my role was revisiting the whole portfolio looking at the prioritization model and the weighting criteria and revisiting how we can do that and continue our work as much as we can. Great. Thanks, Marnie. Uh, how about you, Nicola? What, what, uh, what have you been up to and how has it changed? Um, so I work in the public sector. I'm a PMO manager. Sorry, actually, I was a PMO manager. As of yesterday, I'm now working in corporate governance. Um, the main impact really was, it, I think, at the beginning, um, the impact, I guess, of the COVID and what that meant for people and family members. And then managing a, um, a complete change without um, any option that we all had to start working from home five days a week, which for staff members who've never worked from home before was um, a huge impact to them and how, and how you know a new routine um, and that was for a majority of transport staff but for my team and my department very much so we were all working from home five days a week and I think at the beginning balancing that for people um, like myself as well juggling those um, responsibilities of having kids homeschooling too it wasn't just a simple transition of the working from home it was the pandemic and what that meant and then also juggling kids which was a full-time job on top of a full-time job um, which I think was very stressful at the beginning and exhausting trying to do it all and um, but but as we've progressed obviously kids are back to school we're in a new way of working um, and everything's starting to settle down into that new norm. Great thanks, thanks Nicola. Uh, how about you Lewis? Yes um, for me similarly uh, COVID has been <laughs> quite a a bit of a shock. I'm sure that a lot of us have felt this. Uh, I had uh, a, a contract early in the year that was winding up. And so I was coming back to uh, academia because I'm essentially uh, a lecturer at Sydney University. Uh, and 
that, you know, the, the decision of practitioner versus academic lifestyle was playing in the balance and COVID kicked in. And I guess uh, I am now full-time uh, at university and I run particularly what's called the Capstone Project. So last semester we had 26 teams of five to six students, you know, it was a bumper crop actually, um, and running what are real world projects over a course of, you know, 15 weeks. So it's, it's like herding cats, uh, but they all are learning, but they're also delivering something very tangible to their sponsors. So uh, we had to switch essentially from doing that face to face, which was a lot of fun, a lot of dynamic, you know, activity, uh, students and, and I and all the tutors really kind of loved that intensity. Uh, we had to switch to, to go to, to, to Zoom. And I, I, I think we had to learn a lot in, in that process and how to keep the you know, the intensity and the, uh, the, the, the fun going, even though, we, you know, students now couldn't get here, some of them, some of them went back. Uh, so we had really this distributed uh, group, uh, kind of, if you want to think of it, I am the PMO for this, uh, this, this class, and, and it was rugged. It was, it was uh, uh, literally pivoting, you know, in the middle of a pirouette. <laughs> It didn't fall over though, we, we kept it going, we, we survived. That's the way, Thank, thanks Lewis. So thinking about key challenges then, um, Nicola, what, what did you think, I mean, you mentioned a few difficulties there in your, in your opening statement, what were your key challenges? I think, yeah, I think the, in my opening um, intro there, I think key challenges were my own self and personal management, but um, have got better at that. <laughs> And I think when we first started as well, it was that overwhelming of what should we do in terms of everyone then wanted to set video calls and they ended up being like days where it's just back to back constantly on face to face video calls and meetings um, just because that's what we thought we, were, we know we should be doing. Um, and so I think over time, we've definitely started to balance that a lot more and people are actually starting to do um, meetings with their you know, taking walks and doing the phone calls as well, which I think for our own mindfulness and mental health is good. Key challenges that I'm still finding um, was around that visibility as well, because as a PMO manager, it's around building those relationships, um, not just in my own team, across my department and then across the wider organization. And it's easier, I found, having those face-to-face -face conversations that you have when you're in the office of, you know, maintaining contact as opposed to setting up a catch up or calling someone and they're not available. And it's just a little bit not as natural sometimes to have those off the cuff conversations when you're doing it via teams that you would do in a corridor or in a kitchen um, or say someone's going to go for a coffee. Um, it's just getting used to that and I'm still finding my way. I, I don't think I've got that perfect yet. And I've because I do like face to face and I know we're in COVID, but I've also occasionally have coffee catch ups at my team members houses or I go and arrange a face to face meeting with someone if they're comfortable in doing that and it's safe. But um, I like the five days a week, but I just don't think I could not have that personal interaction. <laughs> I, I need it. <laughs> for yeah. My, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my key challenge is around that visibility and engagement. And, and managing myself and pacing myself. Yeah, perfect, thanks. Um, how about you, Lewis, key challenges? Yeah, I think uh, keeping up the energy levels, you know, um, I, 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 I'm, I got okay at doing it face to face. I'm not a naturally effusive kind of person. So uh, I, I got good at that act, you know, and doing my job in, in coordinating, being the MC, et cetera. And when we moved to Zoom, um, it, it was a different set of muscles, you know, uh, I, I, which I didn't have. And I, I don't think I'm as adept at, um, you know, I don't like silences in, the, in a room. I kind of like energy levels to be high. And Zoom, it wasn't just me, clearly. It was the, 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 the students at the other end. And, and I did a, uh, a PIR in the space of the last few months uh, for pledge. Louise, as you know, and, and keeping a conversation 
uh, keeping it alive, you know, having responses using Zoom, and in some cases without a camera, uh, it, it's a whole new set of skills. I, I, I'm, I'm better at the one-on-one, -on -one and I hope I'm doing okay here. Uh, but, but really, it's, it's not the same level of energy that you, you kind of use to, to, to create enthusiasm, you know, uh, so students were a bit more dead, uh, and, and that deadens your delivery. So that was a big challenge, given I do this every week. And, and my job is to incite some, you know, spark some enthusiasm. Yeah. My turn to be on mute. Yeah, great, <laughs> great insight. Uh, thank, thank you, Lewis. How about you, Amani? Key challenges? Well, similar, I guess, uh, to Nicola and uh, Lewis in terms of I'm a face to face person, I interact with people, and I like informal chats. So, like talking to someone in the kitchen, talking to someone in the corridor, all of these really gives give me momentum and give me opportunities to improve the influence of the PMO in terms of what we do and how we do it. Uh, replacing that with Zoom takes a lot in terms of focus. So sitting on a chair and having one after the other in terms of a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting requires so much effort in terms of focus because it takes away that face-to-face -face and you need to concentrate in terms of the listening skill. You need to concentrate in terms of reading impression from the screen if they provide their video, which is very, very hard. Like I found myself, if I go on three successive meetings, I'm so tired, deflated, much more than being in a room, for example, or having that face to face. So I had to pace myself in a different way to ensure that I don't jam my calendar with uh, Zoom meetings one after the other. The other one was from a PMO perspective, it's the level of uncertainty. So while we pose certain projects, till when we're going to pose them, or we froze, for example, employment in order not to hire new people in order to take on certain tasks within projects. So till when this will impact them in terms of delay and what does it mean to the full picture? So that level of uncertainty was a little bit challenging uh, in addition to everything else. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, I, I wanna return to um, kind of the topic of the presentation around multi-location teams. You've all managed people and outcomes over the last six months. So I'm keen to hear your experiences on team performance. Um, I'll start with Lewis, if I may, who might have a slightly different um, perspective than Nicola and Amani because he's been in a, in, a, in a different environment. So, yeah, Lewis, tell us about your, your team performance. I think you, you might have touched on it with your students. Yeah, I think it is um, something we have to be more conscious of. Uh, I, I, I kind of jump off what Amani said. I think in a normal meeting, a normal face-to-face, -face, so much easier, you know, we're tuned to that. That's what we, we get body language. We, we kind of smile. We, we know what to do. Um, this kind of static image, uh, two-dimensional interaction, I found that the, the teams really suffered. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's not about my skills. It's about our skills and what we are tuned to do. And the, the first thing is hiding, hiding, you know, hiding, I'm sorry, it's a, a value term there, but behind, uh, you know, uh, just the Zoom name rather than turning on your camera or having a static picture. Um, it affects the, the, the team dynamics completely. So, uh, and, and I have the luxury of being able to make a few rules. I guess, you know, we could, we all do, but, you know, may not have the power to do it, but socially you could say hey guys turn on the the cameras but i can actually make that a rule uh so i say when you get into your team meetings you are going to have your name properly described you're going to create a zoom profile you are going to you know be live in that moment uh, because i think we can't respond to each other and and this is totally distributed it's you know these students are physically in different places and there is a sensitivity to what's in the background. I, I, I was just joking with Louise. I hope those post-its aren't incriminating. I got them off the internet. But, you know, a lot of people might feel uncomfortable turning on a camera, not just to show their face, but, you know, where they are, et cetera. So uh, I think we have to teach 
uh, people to use the tools. I, I really liked the, the first session. Uh, Neil Creasley uh, really kind of you know showed us some of the, the the tools he uses. I think getting adept at the tools can really help, and we have to overcome whatever limitations there are and put our characters out there, especially in smaller meetings where we all expect to talk and exchange ideas. I think uh, it's a really important to be live in the moment as best you can. Yep. I've got to say, I'm with you. I find nothing more disheartening than speaking to a meeting full of black tiles. Uh, I, it really affects me. I, I need at least a couple of faces on the screen. Mm. Um, how about you, Amani? Uh, have you found team performance in your environment? Um, well, managing teams um, in multiple geographical locations wasn't something new for me. I've been doing that since the late 90s, early 2000s, and we had conference calls at that point in time, not the same tools we have at this point in time. Um, so it's, it's not the, the tools and managing that, it's the way we changed with the level of uncertainty that impacted people. Taking into consideration how everyone is coping with, for example, homeschooling, having a sick uh, person at home, taking care of a child or a pet, um, working around certain things in order for them to pick up their kids from early education center. These are the things that we needed to cater for in order to ensure luck. For example, when I schedule a meeting, it takes that into consideration. I get as many people as possible, making sure that um, as Lewis suggested and as you suggested, people show their faces because for me, that expression and that face-to-face -face at least is substituted by that picture that enables better engagement and better response. Yeah, th thanks, Amani. Nicola, um, how, how have you got on with, with managing a team? Same to what's been mentioned at the moment. It has been up and down, to be honest. I think it depends on um, how people are feeling that day. One, I'm lucky that I have, my smaller team is quite small and um, we've worked together for a while. We have a very open and trusting relationship that I have built. So prior to COVID, that has made my life a lot easier because I know my staff members will call me if they want to talk anything personal and then that helps me manage where they're at. So I have been lucky to have that. Um, we did change our operating rhythm to what we were doing previously in the office because we used to have a lot of pod conversations and because we were missing those, I set up a Monday morning meeting which sets focus there for that week so the staff are motivated and clear what they have to work on which has really helped and then during the week we have little inform more in um, less formal catch-ups and then on Friday we wrap things up as well then ready for the next week just to get the momentum going. Do not get me wrong, it's up and down, right? The levels of motivation is not perfect. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's what Lewis mentioned around um, flexibility, or someone mentioned that, and absolutely, that's always been my approach. And for some staff members, if they want to work in the evening because they're balancing kids during the day, I'm very comfortable with that. For me, it's around the outcomes and what's being delivered rather being stuck to that rigid nine to five working hours. Sorry, we've got some noise in the background. I'm not sure who is, uh, let me just see. I think uh, Sarah is the uh, one because she's on. Yeah, the got it. Thanks. Sorry about that, guys. That's um, right. th thanks, Nicola. And you've, you've brought us into the, um, the next question, really, and talking about the morale of the people in your teams. Um, and if you come across somebody who's struggling, just any strategies or hints or, or tips about how to, to bring them along in terms of morale and mental health and, and all of those things. It's hard enough when you're in a room with someone to know if they're struggling with their mental health. So how have you found doing it uh, in a virtual world? Nicola, did you want to touch, touch on that just a little, and then I'll, I'll move on because you did touch on it already. Is there anything uh, yeah, else you, I mean, you'd add to that? I think because I know my team as well um, and I know a lot of them are very introverted so my way of managing that is that one-on-one -on -one conversations definitely but it goes on to what I've just said so I've probably answered that it's about that relationship that I've yeah. built with my team um, I know we've got I've got some team members who live on their own and more isolated so I'm aware of that 
and I'll because they're introverted they might not pick up the phone to me but I always check in always check in saying how are you going today it's not a work thing I'm just seeing how you what you're up to what you know how was your weekend how was your evening <laughs> and just to try and have that conversation and because I've got that relationship they're pretty open when they're having a bad day and then we'll look at what we can do sometimes they just want someone to listen to them so it's not always offering oh you should do this yes, or it's, yes. and it's just having that ear as well um so, but that's I know that's not for everyone but that's just the way I've developed my relationships with people and I've got people like outside of my team as well I touch base with who I know sometimes are struggling and it's just having that call and reaching out to people yeah. and accepting yeah. that you're not always going to have full productivity when someone's having that you know a bad time because I know you know it's that personal circumstances like I've got a colleague whose husband's out of work at the moment and the impact that's had on her as well so yeah, and I think it's important what you say, just having that kind of um, awareness to check in on people when your own world is spinning as well, because we've all been spinning. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's good to hear that you've been doing that, because some of us perhaps, even though we might normally, uh, are not in that right headspace. So, yeah, good good tips there. Uh, how, how have you gone, Amani, in terms of bringing people along with you in terms of morale? Um. Checking on people at the start of every meeting in terms of a catch-up, so regular catch-ups and checking on people, just going around the table, like they say, in order to make sure, okay, what have you been up to? How are you feeling? What are your concerns about the environment before we go into the business mode in terms of what we do? And I think that's important to get a sense about the person as well as feel they're not alone. Uh, because put it this way, we are all, as you said, the, our heads are spinning in terms of the level of uncertainty and what's going to happen next and how it impacts us as well as the people whom we love and are around us. So, yeah, like, and I've been catching up also, similar to Nicola, one-on-one -on -one with people in terms of uh, having the chats if I feel that someone needs a little bit more in terms of support. Yeah, great. Thank, thanks, Amani. Uh, Lewis, as you touched on before, you've spent some time uh, working with us um, over the last few months. Uh, I'm working with one of our clients. Um, not an easy scenario to be dropped in it, uh, to be dropped in, I should say, not in it. Um, uh, and you, you did, a, you know, we were all delighted, uh, including the client with the outputs of that. But it wasn't easy. Um, so as you mentioned, you went in to one of our clients and, and helped us with a post implementation review. Can you talk a little bit about how it was trying to achieve outcomes with people you've never met and might not be inclined to help? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about the latter. I'm a very helpful person. I, I think definitely your, your first point, though. You've I didn't, never I didn't met mean you. I, I meant some of the people in that team. <laughs> and mostly they were very helpful. But there were some people who, who were, it's you know, awkward. People, it's... people were busy and, you yeah. know, didn't necessarily have the time. Yeah, PIRs are, are not you know, the, the funnest thing to be on the other side of the desk from. Um, but yeah, it, it, it makes me think, and this is also a general uh, recognition. Um, if I can back off, I, I was very fortunate to have got uh, uh, training from uh, NIDA. Uh, Louise, you were there too, right? It was a presentation skills. And, and of course, that's an acting academy, you know, at, at Uni of New South. Um, and, and, and this has reminded me of it. I'm coming to your, your, your question because we, you know, if we, we have a persona and like we've all talked, it's really great when we're physically you know, hugging each other or whatever, you know, handshaking. It's still a nice uh, 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 physical kind of uh, intimacy and we don't have any of that. And suddenly we are all TV, you know, actors. All we got is a, a little screen with a face and a little bit of hands. Sorry, got to keep them down. Um, but you, you get my point. And, and I, it made me think that we are really calling on a different set of skills now to be able to, in a way, short circuit empathy and, and to, kind of, to, to kind of deliver empathy through a very tiny little, you know, bandwidth channel here. Um, and that, and, but it worked uh, f for me in that situation, in the professional interaction. Um, it comes down to, you know, voice. It comes down to, can you relay your intention, which, you know, is to learn but, and not harm, 
Uh, can you do that <laughs> through this very minimalist kind of uh, few dimensions you got to play with? And uh, like I said, some of the interviews were without camera, you know, um, just because of where people were at the time. Um, so I did learn that, um, you know, I, 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 over the years, you know, clearly I've, I've developed some of those skills, but they're hugely important. They are just, if I can't intone, uh, you know, through the, the telephone, and, and trust me, I used to be terrible at this. I used to be this abrupt person. You'd ring up and say, yeah, what is it? You know, transactional. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I'll do that. Thanks. Bye. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a learning journey for me still. Um, but yeah, I I found that we we need to practice this. This is this is not even Toastmasters. You know, this is this is some people have it innately. I'm I'm just looking, listening to Nick and Amani talking about you know um, the, the the kind of uh, checking in on their people. I I I would like to, but I'm just not that warm and fuzzy, um, never have been, but uh, you got to still have uh, an ability to intone and, and maybe act, you know, <laughs> um, to the point where you are, uh, are putting that person at ease, you are relaying comfort. And, and I think uh, I just wanted to add one thing, if I may, my kids have, of course, helped me as they help us all. Um, you know, this time is so bad for the, the younger generation. It's just, it's awful, right? I mean, the kilograms of plastic, millions of kilograms of plastic, microplastic in the sea, you know, you're not even going to pick it up with a scoop. It's, it's like just as these are bleak times, right? And, and, and we need to, to find ways to help ourselves and others uh, be warm. And uh, we need to do that at scale. <laughs> Anyway, I, I I meandered a bit. Sorry, Louise. Yeah, no, it's okay. But you've what you've done now is you've 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 prompted me to to think. And I've got to be honest, I quite enjoy this virtual form of communication. I mean, you know, we're having a conference today, and I've got quite a smart top on, and I put some makeup on this morning. But I'm sitting here in in jeans and trainers. It's great. Um, <laughs> um, and I so. So, uh, you know, it's, that's a small thing, I guess, but I, it's almost, you can do the formal in a more informal way. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, the, the training we did at NIDA and thinking about, you know, it is a, it is a new skill. Um, and I do think some people are better than, than others. I, um, I know from our past conversations, you're quite a naturally introverted person. Um, Whereas I tend to, uh, you might not guess this about me, but I tend to uh, slightly on the other side of that line. Um, so, you know, as I say, I, I much prefer it to having a conversation on the phone. And before COVID, we had a lot of phone calls, whereas now you'll just jump on a, on a Zoom call. Um, and I just feel there's so much more value, even, even virtually being able to see somebody. Um, I, I do miss the coffee catch-ups and, and the lunch there probably the most useful things but just being able to rather than just have a have a call being able to see someone I think is 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 huge so, yeah it's good very thought-provoking stuff Lewis thanks um so the million dollar question uh, and I'm going to go to Amani first on this one what's going to happen post pandemic is there a path back to whatever normal was um in your organization and for you as an individual Thank you, Louise. That's an excellent question. Um, if I want to put it like we're slightly in my organization going to the post pandemic. However, it's not the normal that we had. It's really taking care in, and taking into consideration uh, social, which I, wanna, I prefer to call physical distancing, as well as a combination of working from the office and working from home. So all of a sudden we've seen traditional sort of management approach changing where trust is now is more the norm in terms of being giving people the flexibility. And we've got a roster here in different teams around who's going to come to the office on what day and who's going to work from home on what day. Even when we schedule our meeting, we're using Zoom meeting rooms, which means we can join from a big screen, put it this way, but we're identifying who's going to join in the room versus who's going to join from their own office while they are on the premises, not from home, which is funny, 
because some would still prefer to come to the office, but because of the restrictions, can, can join the meeting from their own office. So I see that's, put this way, more of a norm that's going to continue while we're still under restrictions of physical distancing in terms of that. The other thing, I think that they say the worst and the best can come out of difficult and challenging times. And I could see that there's a lot of maturity in terms of supporting each other as teams, as members, as communities even, in terms of what we do and how we do it. And that's a very positive, even though I can tell you our reputation as Australians was really bad, displaying on TV screens the fights over the toilet paper, that's really, really bad. But on the other hand, I look at the positive side and how it generated this kindness, empathy in the whole community, reflecting on ourselves and seeing ourselves in that mirror in terms of what we can do. Yeah, great. Thanks, thanks, Amani. Uh, Nicola, what are, what are your thoughts around uh, path back to normal? Um, I hope this is the new normal. Um, I like the same as Amani. I, I love the flexibility. For me, the work-life balance, I, you know, I have a long commute into the city and this has made a huge difference to me. So I just hope we've got that. Well, I think my, my organisation at the moment is really pushing that flexibility, even when we do go back into the office, that if we want, if we don't need to be in the office, we can work from home. Um, and even talking to my new manager, that could be three to five days a week, depending on what I, what I need to do. So it's not like it has to be this week. It's, the, it's flexibility, which I love. Um, and I just, I'm hoping that people are a lot more open-minded to trying something new rather than wait for a pandemic for that early adoption. I, I just change. I love it. The working from home, I've always loved. It's just people are just starting only to get on board with it now. And I just wish people a lot more open-minded to try new ways. It, it's always that, it's always that statement. I've never done that before, so it's not going to work or, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, Nicola, if you don't mind me going off script a little bit, um, is that I know I know that you know you're in a, a public sector environment. Um, I, like many of us today, have also worked in in that environment, and I found um, that even though some of the um, some of the things uh, some of the values of, of working from home and, and agile, small a agile working, they've been espoused for quite a long time in principle. Um, but they haven't been being lived in practice. Um, what was your experience of that shift? Was it instant? Did it take them, you know, a, a period of time to, to get where they needed to be? Can you talk about that a little bit for us? Um, you mean the wider organisation? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you an example. I always remember um, a certain organisation related to the one you work for, but not the same one. Um, saying they were you know going agile and, and hot desks and breakout areas and you know bean bags and stuff um but then they'd still get people to clock in and out with uh, the chronos cards yes um def well from from my own department and what i'm aware of um they are really adopting that flexibility like i think in my career overnight uh, yeah, I think most people actually, do you know, a mixed bag, probably a mixed bag because some people find it very comfortable to be back in the office. I think that it depends on your management style as well, because I know some of the different managers um, prefer to have their team in one day a week, even during this. Whereas for my manager, no, not at all. Very comfortable as working five days a week from home, face to, you know, online meetings. And if we feel like we need, then we'll catch up for a coffee, maybe more socially at someone's house. So I, I, I don't think it's, I can't generalize because I think it depends on the different managers. And because I work in a large um, public agency, you know, there's a lot of leadership styles, isn't there? But I do yeah. think there has been a huge culture change in that flexibility and before COVID, we were looking at new office spaces um, dotted around the city. And I, I wonder if they're going to start thinking about your home as your, as your main base. And then an office is maybe a flexible choice on which office that is, rather than you have to be in that one or you have to be in that one, um, which I'm having that conversation with my new manager this week. And I think that's her way of thinking too. We'll just work it out wherever we need to be. 
it doesn't have to be like prescribed this is what you have to do so i do think that there is that culture change definitely happening with covid which i'm all like you know happy about yeah <laughs> great um lewis i'm gonna um ask you a, a last question and then we've had some really good comments going on in the in the um chat so i'm gonna cover off on some of those um but if you could click your fingers and the world would go back to normal tomorrow what changes would you want to take with you yeah i i actually don't think we should go back i i think we are learning so many interesting things here that so there's a lot of things if you know you want to take that view to, that we need to learn from this I, I think we've just said some of them i think we've we're much more humanized by this i i, I honestly uh i feel somehow more comfortable on Zoom. I know this probably isn't a uh, universal thing, but you know, if I, I, I just remember the, the, I think it was the BBC uh, commentator. Do you remember where his kids walked in yeah. uh, with their, their you know, little stroll? It was, it was classic, you know, slapstick. And we all laughed because of course, you know, that never happens on BBC where everyone's so proper. But you know, if somebody walked behind you now, any one of us, it would not be the end of the world. Mm. Uh, you know, it wouldn't become a, a viral hit. Uh, of course, the kids were particularly funny. But, um, you know, it, we, we, we expect our life to be more intermingled with work. Um, and I think that has to be something we take away. I mean, uh, I think what Nicholas said, I think there's big wheels turning in terms of what happens to real estate in the city and, you know, uh, offices, uh, you know, are they necessary? Does we work win out of this or does it lose? You know, there's some really interesting dynamics that I think uh, we can all watch. But uh, the humanity is what I, I think. Uh, and even though we're talking about, you know, really poor tools and having different skill sets to be able to use them uh, well. Uh, I think there's a humanity that, you know, we, we all care much more and it's exhausting, I think. I'm trying to make sense of it in my own head. Oh, you frozen, Lewis. We lost him. Oh, okay, well, we've lost him. He's in a black hole. <laughs> He's in a black hole. Uh, he was just saying how much he liked Zoom as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, I might go back and uh, see if he comes back, but I'm going to go and recap um, on some of the comments. And, oh, sorry, you dropped out, Lewis, you froze up just as you were saying how good Zoom was. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they do that? They should have kept me going. Uh, no, I think there's so many learnings that we can take from this. There's so many good things that we really have to, uh, to you know, change. I think we are never going to go back. There is, you know, the, the new normal uh -oh, point in the jar, but you know, it's 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 big. It's this is big. Yeah, awesome. Um, thank you guys for your, for your insights. That's been um, really insightful and actually really fun as well. So I'm going to cover off on some of the comments with you guys in in the chat, and then we'll have time for a, for a couple of questions for those that uh, would like to ask them. Uh, so comment from Pete, interesting comment from Nicola about personal adjustments and understanding yourself. Pete's going to talk a bit more about that in his presentation later too. That's a huge topic, you know, one of one of the reasons that now is a really good time to get together as a group and just share some of that because everybody's been impacted um, and everybody's been impacted a little bit differently. Um, so looking forward to that later. Um, Gillian, I'm with you, Amani. Back-to-back -back video is so much more tiring than the same run of face-to-face. Absolutely. I don't think there'll be anybody who disagrees with that. Uh, Kerry says it's easy to suffer fatigue from being zoomed out. Cameras are a must. Absolutely. Um, it's also helpful to have a third piece of communication. So a poster or moving slides, much more personal, uh, personable. Yeah, agree as well. Kerry, great comment. Uh, another Peter comment, tools are essential and knowing how to use the tools is too. Um, how to choose that. <laughs> um, I find myself if I switch from so we mostly use zoom as an organization but we have clients that use teams and when I try to switch from zoom to teams I'm all fingers and thumbs trying to do the same things it's yeah it's hopeless don't even talk to me about Skype for business kill me now <laughs> um, so tools are, are such a big part of, of what we do now um, Fiona says, completely agree, Lewis. I find we miss so much when people won't put their cameras on or won't um, change the dynamic. Um, 
yeah i agree and and one of the things we struggle with a little bit is um if you are using video calls um, and your internet's not great you have to turn it off so that you can be heard sometimes which is which can be challenging um but it's getting more and more unusual actually as people i think upgrade their internet to to meet the demands um uh lewis has just replied there, making the best of what we've got in terms of tools um sam uh perhaps this suggests that organizations need to spend more time energy money on building virtual and verbal communication skills in individuals great point sam uh haven't seen any of this yet in my organization but possibly a good market opportunity yeah how how right is that i mean we kind of somehow take it for granted that we can just do it even if we're not very good at it you just kind of have to crack on so yeah perhaps that is a, an opportunity um Neil said, "There's a um, we can see who's interacting with collaborative tools. We need to be mindful of those who are not seeing. Um, are they timid and need inclusion, or are they hiding?" Yeah, great comment, Neil. Uh, tools are not just apps. A mobile phone is a tool. So yeah, and and as you say, Lewis, yeah, there's people who would naturally gravitate to the back of the room, and they're now doing that in a virtual way as well. Um, comment from Jade, I wonder what kind of impact the ongoing uh, post-pandemic option of working from home most of the time will affect organisational culture. How do we keep a well-performing unit with um, likely forever reduced physical closeness? Yes. Um, would any of you like to try and hazard an answer to that one? Um, I'd like to build on this in terms of when we're working from home, most of us have been built, working from home with relationships that we've already built in face-to-face -face context. So if we now start working from home and based on these relationships, we are still understand the person in front of us. The challenge if all of these relationships have to be built in a virtual environment. And I think that's another dimension, like we talked about using these tools as a technical skill, using the tools as a soft skills, but then the culture in terms of organizational change and getting to know each other and the context of which within we are operating is going to be more critical in an online environment. Yeah, great comment, Amani. And I think it's another one of the points that Peter's gonna pick up in his presentation a bit later on as well. Um, final comment from Neil. Um, transport is one of the defined wastes, according to Lean. Remote working has effectively eliminated this waste. How, how true is that? You know, the time you get back in your day when you don't have to go into a busy city like Sydney or, or Melbourne or even Brisbane to, to some extent. Um, you know, it's a couple of hours extra in your day for, for most of us. Definitely. Um, we've just got a couple of minutes to go. Would anybody like to ask any other questions of our panel? Okay, well, if there's no other questions, then all that leaves uh, me is to thank you all very much for joining us, for your insights and your wisdom. And yeah, thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Uh,